Alright guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to a little tutorial on loaders because I see a huge amount of confusion regarding what the loader is and what it isn't and I've decided to actually make a proper loader tutorial because I see a huge amount of misinformation going around and let's try and clear up a few things. So all I've built here is a very simple uh, app, just a list view it's an adapter, so it's literally just a list view in an activity that displays a list of items. And we're going to use a loader to load a set of strings into this. So first off, let's actually talk a little bit about the loaders themselves. So the loader name is actually slightly misleading, but it kind of makes sense in a way. The first thing about loaders is loaders are not one-shot things. They're not like, um, you know, an a they, they, they don't asynchronously load something and that's it they're done loaders are not built like that loaders are designed to observe a data set and wait for a data set to be uh, ready they load they also cache which handles data rotation and i'll explain that later on and the real strength is though is the fact that they will observe something if you can if you build it into them now in this tutorial we're not going to talk about the cursor loader because the cursor loader is pure evil I don't like the cursor loader, it doesn't work. Well, it does work, it works very well, but you need to have a content provider and all this other stuff, and it's just way too complicated, and 99% of apps don't actually have content providers because they don't need to expose data, and putting a content provider in means you have to shoehorn everything through a single cursor, and most of the time your data is relational, you know, you might have a list of articles, and a list of comments table, and an author's table, and a picture table, or something, and you end up having to put all this data together Afterwards, you know, so you have to do this giant ass query to get everything into a cursor, then you've got your cursor loader, and then some it just ends up being a mess. So, this is how to use a loader or how to write custom loaders to load your own models pre populated, ready to go uh, for lists and stuff. So, uh, the loader we're going to be using is the support library loader, which you should always use. So, let's actually get started on building an actual loader. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an async task loader in this video, and then in the next video, we're going to do a a, 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 a completely custom loader for doing network calls. In. Now, that's a bit cr cr crazy sounding, but I show you its advantages. So, anyway, let's uh, create a new class. Uh, let's say we just call it a string loader. If I can type, okay, and we're going to extend async task loader. And our type is going to be of a list of strings. So we're going to pass back a list of strings. Okay. So now this is given out to me about load and background stuff. Why not take away the override and constructors and stuff? Okay. So this is what a basic loader looks like. So the loader goes through a couple of steps. It goes through what's called the start, and then it's in a started state. It can also go into what's called a stop state. And it can also go into the reset state, which means it's being destroyed. So in order for a loader to actually work, we need to do the we need to override on start loading. OK, and what on start loading does is if we actually click into this and jump to the method implementation, this is in a library. I can't view the code. Damn it. <laughs> anyway, essentially what on start loading does is um, it when you call start or init loader on start loading will be called for the first time so what we want to do in here is we want to actually tell the loader to load and you call force load now you're probably wondering why don't you just call on start loading manually or why doesn't it just call force load well i'll explain that in a minute but force load essentially forces this on our loading background to be called so let's implement this so we're just going to have list string uh, strings or what's we'll called data equals new or actually we just call it arrays dot as list get context get resources dot get string array now I just have my stuff in a string array items and then we're going to return this okay then what we want to do is we want to call deliver result or override deliver result and i'll explain that in a minute what we're going to do here okay good stuff we've got a loader implemented so let's hook it up to our activity 
Now, generally with loaders, I don't implement the loader callbacks directly. I generally do them as an anonymous inner class. So we just do this, uh, loader callbacks of type uh, string list. New loader callbacks. And we get this. I know this looks kind of rough, but hey, we have our loader callbacks. So the first thing we want to do is uh, when the loader our loader callbacks for this particular loader are ready, we're going to call new string loader, and then we're going to have uh, get application context because you only need a context. Every time our load is finished, we want to call the adapter dot swap data, and we're going to pass in our strings. Let's get rid of this up here. Sorry, that's why I was just temporary uh, checking the thing was working. Hang on a second. I had to adjust my uh, settings in Open Broadcaster. And then on loader reset, we're not going to do anything. Technically, we should swap an empty list. Actually, we'll do that, okay? So that means the loader's been destroyed. Uh, there's no data to display, so we'll swap the list. Uh, uh, collections. Empty list. What the devil? Hmm. Never knew you could do that. Never knew you could type the uh, empty list like that. Maybe it's a Java 7 thing. Anyway, so let's actually get this uh, uh, show on the road. So we're going to call, we're going to get our support loader manager dot init loader. We need to give the loader an ID that's unique to it. So the way I generally do that is I'm just going to put it into strings. Actually, we're going to have a values file called IDs. This is just a great little trick if you need to uh, mock up IDs. Item name string loader ID type ID. Okay, good stuff. And then we can actually just use that order ID dot string loader ID. So I can fake IDs, which is very useful for this. Uh, for our bundle, we're going to call null because we're not passing any arguments. And we're going to pass our loader callbacks. So we're going to run this now, and the video is going to get choppy because Gradle is going to burn my CPU in half. And once this runs, we'll be good to go. And as you can see, it loads the items as expected. So what's actually happening here? Well, the loader manager, first of all, starts up and call an init loader's call, which means start this loader and keep it around for observation. Then our string loader is called, or this is uh, odd create loader's called. So basically it's like, give me a loader. I don't care how it's implemented. Just give me any loader. That's a list of strings type. OK, so we return our string loader, which extends async task loader, which extends loader and list strings. And then, OK load finish means I the loader basically says this basically tells them we uh, when we deliver our result here when we call this true to this um, where's my loader gone call true to super dot deliver result our loader will automatically go okay we're good to go actually you know what I'm gonna turn up the text size I forgot to do that There we go. That's a bit better. You can probably actually read what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, the uh, so unload finish gets called. That basically means the loader has called true to a super dot deliver result. It basically means load and background has returned. This gets called. It calls up to super, and then that tells the loader here's data ready to go. Unloader reset essentially means this loader is no longer valid. Don't display any of the data. Now, sometimes you don't have to call a swap data. Oftentimes, I'll actually uh, have an abstract class extending these, extending the loader callback, so I don't actually have to implement this. It's a little trick. Anyway, so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, that's a basic custom loader. Now, this video has been running on for maybe 10 minutes or so, so I'm going to stop the video here after a little bit. But an async task loader, just so you know, this load in background is called on a background thread. 
So that, uh, that's obviously why it's called an async task loader. So this is a great loader for using with databases and it's fantastic. I use them all the time and I'll explain one of the real advantages of loaders in a minute or in the next video. So anyway guys, that's it. And we'll get more into async task loaders uh, caching system next time.